If you haven't had an opportunity to watch Dracula and Toad, stop listening now, major spoilers, here we go. Continuing on, man. So, Dracula is hope. Um, this whole idea of him taking on um, the master vampire's uh, powers is the idea of hope. Hope for his people. Hope that he can save his people from the situation that they're in. Um, which is putting a thousand of their children, including Dracula, a.k.a. Vlad the Impaler's child, inside of this um, child warrior camp where they train up children to be unstoppable destruction um, uh, robots, I guess you can say. Just killers, man, pretty much. Pretty much the same stuff that we saw out of 300. Now, Whenever uh, Dracula gets his powers, the whole thing that the Master Vampire says is, you can have my powers, you can taste them, you can test them for three days, and after the three days, if you do not drink blood of a human, you will go back to your normal self. But what's kind of fascinating, man, is that um, whenever um, Vlad the Impaler drinks the blood of the Master Vampire, he dies. And then after that, he becomes... Dracula. Drink and become Dracula. It's, it's really, I'm not gonna lie, man. That, that was really freaky, man, because Charles Dance, the way that he plays this character, it's, uh, it, it's, it's freaky, man. And the way that they decided to, you know, use a lot of dark areas inside this cave, um, the skin of the master vampire is almost like, uh, wet, dead flesh. Like, if you stayed in the bathtub for a long time, your, you know, your flesh becomes rubbery, and you get to see, uh, it looks like it's perspiring a little bit, but it's not really dead, it's alive, but it's dead looking, and that's what that looks like, man, they really have this fleshy, fleshy color, man. Another fascinating thing about the Master Vampire is that they show you, um, a lot of the stuff that we wanted to see as fans of Dracula through the Master Vampire. They get that out of the way real quick. Um, whenever the vampire is about to um, drink your blood or suck your blood, they showed us that the jaw becomes elongated, the uh, teeth, you know, sharpen, and then after that, he can actually pop his jaw all the way down. It opens up almost like something out of... Maybe a scary movie with a scary movie mask. I guess kind of like a really bad example, but you, you, you understand what I'm saying there. The scary movie mask, um, or the scream mask, where he has the giant, giant jaw. And just imagine that just scarier and fangs coming out. And what's kind of fascinating also is that whenever it's hungry, you know, the master vampire, you can see through its flesh inside and see the... the um, veins and, and uh, the blood. It's, it's, really, it's really creepy, man. I love the score on this. Um, whenever you're inside of the Master Vampire's lair, um, after he, um, you know, changes um, uh, Vlad into Dracula, you really feel, you know, frightened, man. You feel like that, man. This could be, you, you know, this this movie could go either way. It could be, you know, an action thriller. It could be a horror fi uh, flick. It could just be um, a fantasy film. Who knows, man? But whatever they did with this, you know, director, man. Um, they got to continue doing this, man. I mean, seriously, Gary Shore, man, like, hats off to you, man. The writers, man, uh, Matt uh, um, Sazama, uh, Burke Sharpless, and um, a couple of other people, man. Like, this just, it, it really, really did a good job, man. Um, moving on. So, we see that um, in order to save his people, Vlad takes the blood, he drinks it, and then after that, he dies, he becomes Dracula, he shows you the trials, the tribulations, the tests, he's able to, you know, hear insects, spiders, um, you know, doing their webs, I guess you can pretty much say he's able to hear the conversations between, you know, Charlotte's web, you know, <laughs> let's just be honest, that that's what he's able to hear, um, he can hear and communicate with bats, pretty much anything that flies, anything that has um, a connection to him, mostly stuff that's nocturnal, um, um, rabbits, um, um, deer, he can see them easily, he can smell them, he can taste uh, human flesh and blood and everything, it's it's really fascinating, man, and it's just like, you know, whenever um, Clark Kent, aka kyle -El, when he gets his powers, he awakens to new stuff, and, you know, he's jumping he's running he's testing everything out it's like that fortress of solitude moment man that's what you kind of get there and i really do believe that this movie man of steel the amazing spider-man 2 and a couple other movies were the inspiration for this man because you can see the scenes in there anyway so 
Um, whenever Vlad is facing this warlord, this this uh, really really awesome guy's um, uh, army, they decide to say, um, "We need help from other things." Okay, and what ends up happening is is Vlad. The first time that the army f um, um, fights Vlad the Impaler, and when I say this, man, this is why I gave this 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 movie ten out of ten stars. Vlad the Impaler. They showed you what Vlad the Impaler is, what what he's capable of. He's killed hundreds of thousands. He doesn't feel anything behind it. It it's just meaningless to him. It's just war, and and I guess you could say he's not really you know fascinated by it or, or drawn to it. It's just he's so good at it, it he feels nothing. So he can kill your kids, he can kill your mother, he can kill your sister. It doesn't matter who he kills. It doesn't mean anything to him. So he runs out there um, after he kind of disappears for a couple of days. His wife's like, where have you been? You know, they're destroying the city. They're killing our people. Help us. And that's how he gives the speech. He runs outside or actually, excuse me, he slow motion walks outside and there's cannon fire. He walks right through that, walks to the army, walks up to the army. There's, I, I'd say at least, at least a thousand men. And single-handedly, he destroys every single one of these people, man. I mean, he's impaling them. He's uh, breaking their necks. He's actually ripping their throats out. Um, he's grabbing people, s slamming them on top of, of other people. Um, anything that you can think of, WWE moves, whatever you're thinking of, that's what's in this scene right here. And Dracula puts Superman to shame. He puts X-Men to shame, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, um, Nick Fury, Black Widow, Marvel Comics, DC Comics. Nothing can compare to this scene. Nothing. And I'm, I'm going to 100% be real with you. Nothing can compare to this because this actually showed you for the first time, not even the General Zod and Man of Steel scene, they showed you the power of a vampire. For the first time, they showed you what a vampire is capable of. And not this Twilight crap with all this, you know, uh, diamonds and, and, and glitter. None of that crap, man. They showed you. And it was almost, I guess, back taking it back towards Blade, where the vampires really got boogie. They really started beating on people. They really were powerful, man. That's what it, it, it to me, I think it took me back to Blade. I would love to see Blade versus Dracula, just like we saw at that one scene, but they never gave it to us, you know, when, when Blade was about to confront Dracula. I think if I was Marvel right now, I would really take this into consideration, man. I would let, you know, Universal, you know, create their monster universe, but I would immediately put out a movie, man, with Blade versus Dracula. I, I'm telling you, if they did that with Wesley Snipes, with Wesley Snipes as Blade and Luke Evans as Vlad the Impaler, a.k.a. Dracula, it would make a ton of money. I would throw my wallet at that movie, man. It's just that good. Moving on real quick. This is not going to take that long. Um, the, next time, the next scene that happens is, you know, you start hearing about the legend. You start hearing about, um, you know, um, the, the myth and rumors start flying around. Anyway, the town turns against, um, you know, Vlad, a.k.a. Dracula. They burn him alive. And it's really uh, a gruesome scene, man. Anyway, they show you that, you know, the vampire can't be burned. He can't be killed. None of that stuff. His flesh comes back immediately. The one thing that I guess is his kryptonite or his weakness is silver and it's uh, sunlight. If silver gets to him, it kind of weaken him, weakens him, just like Superman is weakened by kryptonite. If the sun touches him, it rips his flesh off his face. Comes straight off, like just like skin and bone. That's the only thing that'll be left will be bone. If he stays in the sunlight for that long. Um, anyway, he gives a speech. He's like, I was the one that saved you. Um, you know, this is the loyalty you gave me. Anyway, he uses this, this communication between bats in order to um, fight the next army. Because the warlord was like, okay, he killed a thousand men. We'll send ten thousand. He runs through those dudes. It's really, really easy. It's that simple. Runs through them, but he makes a mistake. And he ends up uh, costing um, his wife's um, life. And it's a, it's a pretty powerful scene, man. Um, they did it, I think, in a better way than uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2. And um, she snaps her back. She snaps pretty much the back of her skull on the ground. He catches her at the last second. They don't show you that. But, you know, you can see that, you know, she probably broke her legs. She probably snapped her spine and probably her neck also. But she was still alive. She just couldn't move. She couldn't do anything besides, like, tell him, take my blood, drink my blood. 
And that's what ends up happening, man. He did all this to save his family, but in the end, he lost everything because maybe he got a little too greedy. Maybe um, he didn't think everything through. Maybe he just had too much on his plate, but he did try. And uh, I'm not going to lie, man. It's a really powerful scene, man, where you get emotional, man, because all he wanted to do was save his family, man. Uh, we're going to continue on with part three, and uh, this will be the last part, and, and we should be done there, man. Thanks again for watching, guys. I couldn't do this without you. And uh, yeah, if you want to listen to part three, continue on there. Right here. Comment, like, subscribe.